It is on a Sunday morning. Ocheng wakes up and sits on his doorstep. He looks uneasy, disturbed, and shrunken. He is fidgety and immersed in deep thought. Ocheng is 44 years old, the oldest of his seven siblings. Several members of his family, including himself, suffer from schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental disorder characterized by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thoughts, speech, and behavior. The cause of schizophrenia is unknown, but researchers believe it may be caused by a combination of biological, genetic, and environmental factors. A person with this condition requires urgent medical attention. But for Ocheng and his siblings, urgency is just but a dream for their 76-year-old mother who lives in a state of destitution. Domitila Anyango, a 76-year-old widow, is pounding cassava. She will dry the cassava before taking to the posho mill to make flour. The cassava clearly decayed is the only available food in her household. She is now the breadwinner. Her husband passed on in 2021 after battling throat cancer. Majina yangu naita Domitila Anyango Owete. Mhm. Mimi ni mujani. Muse yangu naaga sasa mwaka tatu. Kama naaga. Nawaacha mimi na watoto saba. Kwa kumi tatu mekufa. Sasa nabaki na saba hiyo. Saba hiyo pia, watatu hiko wagonjwa. Kuna namna. Hiko kichwa mbaya. Kama naanza, onapigana tu. Hata mimi nyesi taki kuona. Nilala tu inje, ukupata mimi na yasa uwa mimi. Hiyo mm -hmm. sida mimi hiko nae. Domitila Anyango has lost three of her oldest children and her husband to death. Two girls and one boy. According to her, her children left home in good health. One of the girls suffered a short illness before her demise. The other daughter, who had been married, suffered from a short illness and died. The son had tuberculosis and his health was deteriorated for a while until he also passed on. Wale watatu, natoka tu nyumbani kama hiko msima, wasichana. Okinge huko mgonjwa napiga mchana, nasikia tu mgonjwa. Kuenda wana, napata tu kama hiko kidaka kidogo mekufa. Tena ule mgini, kia naenda oleka. Mgonjwa. Kama wansa sikia msuri, umekufa. Na hiyo kijana, mekufa nyumi. Hei sasa naanza tu mgonjwa wapa tu kidugu, kidugu kufua. Ati hiku na tibi. Anakataa kumesa dawa. Sasa hiyo naenda tu pole pole, pole pole, pole pole, paka mekufa. Nicodemus Owiti, her husband, had throat cancer. By the time they realized it was cancer, it had advanced and there was nothing they could do. It has been three years since his death. His gravesite has been plastered with concrete and trees are already sprouting around it. Family members erected a memorial cross on his grave to honor his death. Schizophrenia runs in families, which means that people are more likely to develop the condition if they have a family member who has it as well. If a parent has schizophrenia, the child has a 13% chance of inheriting it. If both parents have the condition, the risk rises to more than 20%. Nicodemus Owiti, Domitila's husband, suffered from schizophrenia. He most likely passed it down to some of his children. Nicodemus, kwanza mwaka sabini, hili kuwa nagonjeka. Mugonjwa hiyo ndi unasumbua mimi kwa watoto. Sasa, pika mwaka ya tisaine, ndi unaingia kwa kanisa. Maombi. Hiyo mgonjwa wa maisa. Mekaa kwa kanisa karibu mwaka ine. Kwanza kumingia kwa kanisa tisa ine. Nini? Sabini na tisa. Sabini na tisa. Sasa meomba kufika tisa ine na mbili. 
ugonjwa na sika mtoto. Kijana unawitu uchie. Mm. Kwa sule, kama hiko form 3 na enda form 4. Mm. Nafikini mchezo, tena kuwa tuki chuambaya. Paka sahi. Tena kufika hapo, tisaini sijini na ngapi hapo, kijana ingine pia maunda simu. Sasa juusi, ule mtoto kutina mima, kichu anakuwa mbaya maunda simu. Sasa ye ni mkali ya taki kuona hata mutu watu na gopa tu yetu. Hmm. Kuona mutu na piga to. Musa is Domitila's youngest son. Musa, Ocheng, and Odongo are siblings. They are all affected by schizophrenia. This disease was most likely passed down to them from their father. Domitila, who lives in destitute poverty, finds it difficult to care for her ailing children and several of her grandchildren who were abandoned in her home by her daughter-in-law. Domitila is responsible for at least six of her grandchildren. The youngest is less than a year old. She finds it difficult to take care for this large household as the breadwinner. All of her grandchildren are too young to assist her with the tedious chores, so she's left to do all of the housework. Domitila has to clean the house, wash utensils, wash clothes, fetch water, and do any other necessary chores every day before she goes out to hustle and bring food home. When she does not have enough money to buy food, she is forced to serve her grandchildren only black tea for breakfast, lunch, and supper. <laughs> Napiga tu chai. Hata saa hii. Ukona napiga chai ndio mwenye anatoka kusuli anapata nyinyi mkunywe tu. Mimi nataka mandazi. Kunywa tu chai msibe. Unasinda ja. Naweka tu hapo. Bilika wanakunywa. Sitaki maneno. Mimi maneno ugali kwa nyumba yetu, ndoa yetu ya unga ndio hiyo bure. Kama iko mimi kitangu mimi natoka kuoleka hata kutoka kwa mtoto. Mimi hapana sindanga ja. Kusia kikia mtu na sikula super moja. Mimi na mimi naangalia tu. Sasa hii mimi naona na macho. Jana wamekutumia tu chai hiyo. Kufiko siku napiga tu chai. Sema nyinyi mkula tu haraka haraka msibe na jikasa kula kumbe mbili. Mwenye napenda ngosa tu watu tatu. Kama nakusakula anaenda lala. Sasa hivi ndio toka kwa shule napata na kusapiga chai hiyo. Mm. Sinaja kama nakusakunywa. Mm. Hata dogo hiyo pia nikunywa tu. Hiyo maneno juzi nikuwa mekunywa tu chaya hivyo na muna hiyo. E, mimi na kataza, roo yangu natoka hata kwa chaya sitirungu. Sasa roo nafanya tu na muna. Roo chaya sitaki na toka. Mimi nasema, e, mekunywa chaya subuhi. Osiku mekunywa lina tina keso. Hiyo ugonjwa wa chakulo na kuja sika mimi. Iko na watoto. Wale iko tano, hao iko pia ene. Iko na watoto tisa. Mm. Na wachia mimi matoto. Mutu natoka subuhi, ujui mtoto nasa kula lanji, ujui mtoto nasa kunu hata chai, mimi ndiyo mama watoto. Hapo mimi nangalia na sema, eh, mungu na waka mimi kwa ratili yao nini. Unasinda hata kuongea. Domitila Awiti is therefore forced to pay school fees for all her nine grandchildren. Her grandchildren attend a local government school. Domitila goes to beg the headmaster to allow them to school because she is unable to raise their school fees. Kwata lufu moja na pareka. Sasa naweka lufu mbili. Sasa kwa mana ya naweka tuwa lufu moja. Kwa tutu nasoma tu. Sasa naweka kando mtoto hiko kwa dagasa ya nani. Diyo pesa yake naweka juhu. Na wale kama weka lufu moja, wana preku mtoto nasoma tu. Sasa ya nani hindi upesa yake hiko juhu. She believes that the children are better off at school than at home. Domitila, who sells maize, is able to raise a thousand shillings for their school fees 
over a long period of time. Mimi kwa kasi nikuwa nafanyanga na usanga maindi kwa sukumu. Sai, mili yangu nakuwa mbaya. Na sinda mimi hata kenda kwa sukumu. Sai na sinda mimi nakaa tu nyumbani. Sai hakuna namna nyumbani. Mimi nakaa tu watu tunangalia mimi. While at school, her grandchildren are isolated from other students in an empty classroom. This is due to the fact that their school fees have accumulated and the school administration is attempting to be understanding by keeping them. Ochieng and Musa, both of whom suffer from schizophrenia, have a tendency to become extremely violent. This violent nature is mostly directed at their mother, Domitila Awiti. Musa, kama na kusanza na mna hiyo. Kama ye kiba na kusajikasa na mna hiyo, na ruka na mna hiyo. Au kupata mimi yupo na piga tu mimi kama mtoto. Mhm. Yeye kusema sifu gani? Mhm. Hata juzi karibu kuua mimi. Mhm. Sasa kia mpia na kuwa ukali. Kia mpia karibu ku. Eh, mimi na wakia Mungu ndio napitisa. Nachukua tu mawe. Mawe. Hata Musa yeye juzi nachukua tu mawe iko mingi mimi naanza kogota rogota mawe kapa kwa laro hapo na toa tu nje ile tupa tupa huko. Mawe nachukua tu mawe kupata na linga kupata wewe. Musa was once extremely brutal. He stoned her until she collapsed. This disease has had a significant impact on her family, beginning with her late husband and now her three sons. As the only sane person left, she finds herself in a difficult situation, unsure of what to do. The situation has drained her mentally, physically, and emotionally, and she sometimes feels like an outcast. Most people dislike her. Some even mock her, while others fear her. She is humiliated. She is unable to do any other work due to her advanced age, and the only work she can do at the moment requires very little effort. In Kenya, I have a good idea. 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 Sasa ngufu yako pia ameiza kutembea. It is the joy for every mother to see her child grow into a healthy and strong person and later on come and help her when they grow old. But for Damitila's case it's different. It breaks my heart every time she says that her kids, her son, beat her up. It's all because they want to, because of a condition that they have. It's indeed very disturbing. And all I wish and hope for, Dom for Damitila is to get some peace of mind. And for her, all she wants is for her children, for her three sons, to get into a mental institution, for them to get uh, further medical attention. And also, for her daughter-in-law to be held accountable because it is not right for her, what she did, to go and dump the children with her, not knowing what they eat, where they sleep, how they go to school. That is something that is very wrong. She's supposed to come, take her kids, so that Domitila will have some kind of peace. And uh, if you'd like to support Domitila in one way or another, reach out to her. Her contacts are in the comment section. And subscribe, like, and comment.